Welcome to episode 6 of Mental Mastery, where I interview the world's greatest minds on what it takes to live an epic life. I'm your host Max Weigand, and today I have the pleasure of talking to professional cross-country mountain biker Anton Cooper from New Zealand. At only 23 years of age, he has already set out to conquer the biking world by winning both the Junior and Under-23 World Championships, being the youngest winner of the Under-23 World Cup of all time, and winning the Commonwealth Games 2014. After missing the Olympics 2016 due to chronic fatigue, he came back stronger than ever and in his latest World Cup placed second in the elite race by only an inch behind the current Olympic champion. So Anton, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So glad to have you. So you had this incredible progression. You won your first biking race at the age of 11. Now you're shooting for Olympic gold in, in, in 2020. So how, how do you get started with mountain biking? Oh, well, it's a long story, I suppose, but I used to do a lot of sports when I was um, a young kid, and with my dad, we used to do cross-country running, tennis, uh, a bit of football, and um, cycling was another hobby that we did on the side, and it wasn't, yeah, until I was 11 that I entered my first race, my first mountain bike race, and um, I won that, and I decided that I wanted to win some more and keep going, and I guess I've just been kind of climbing that ladder step by step and now we're here you know racing it for, for the wins at world cups yeah you really had this amazing progression so walk us through a little bit how to work so at 17 you won your first medal at the junior world cup right what was it like winning like on such a big stage oh it was pretty massive like that moment um to when i first woke up and um, I suppose as an unknown rider from down in New Zealand in a very European dominated sport that was uh, quite special and to come out of the blue to get noticed like that to win um, those junior races in such dominant fashion it certainly got me noticed and got me a pro deal and that was you know allowed me to continue and make this a job um, you know for the last seven years now being a professional. That's so cool so why do you think you were able to dominate the sport so much why do you think you were so good from such a young age <laughs> i think um i enjoyed the sport and i enjoyed riding and training and i had a good skill set um i trained very hard as a junior i think i did the right things there and um, i've had good support around me the, my whole career through my family or different teams and sponsors have always been had good teams and good equipment and that's allowed me to, to do a good job and obviously you have to know how to suffer as an elite racer. You have to have that mental element that allows you to push through the pain barrier um, and just give it, whether it's, you know, 1% more than your competition. You know, we're so close, everyone, in our abilities. It often comes down to what mental state you're arriving at the race and whether you're ready to, to punish your body and, and get the most out of it. And that's So is that something that you had to develop in yourself over time? Or is that something that you kind of had just getting into Honestly, it already? I it's mental toughness. And I think it something. comes quite naturally. I'm very competitive. Um, I have a, a strong will to succeed. And, you know, growing up with, with these other sports that I did, I was very competitive in everything I did. I was a, quite a good tennis player and um, actually a very good cross-country runner at a young age until, um, you know, I started to realize that my real strength lay in cycling and especially mountain bikes. So um, I guess it was just like a progression into the mountain biking and, um, I, I was able to carry over all those elements that I was good at from those other sports and um, whether it's a skill or that reactions from, from tennis or football um, into that pain that you need to be a good cross-country runner and you combine all that stuff into to be a good cyclist or a good mountain biker. I think that's just... Yeah. Well, it's so cool that you're able to kind of combine all the skills from those different sports and put them into one and become like excel at this one sport. Yeah, I love for that. sure. So do you, let's let's talk a little bit deeper about the mindset. So do you have any, how do you prepare for races mentally? Do you have any rituals, any pre-race routines that you have every, that you do every single time that get you ready? To compete? I try to keep things like um, fairly normal. I don't try to do anything crazy or special or anything different that I might do from let's say a national level race to a World Cup race. Um, I think routine is really important for me, routine in the training, routine in, um, you know, race week and just going about the processes. I think that's really important. Um, so you arrive at the race in like a fresh and relaxed um, state and you're ready to go rather than being, 
you know, going, oh, I had a week from hell, I've been traveling here, there, and everywhere, I arrived only, you know, the day before the race, you want to be there early, calm, prepared, have done laps on the track, have your tire pressure sorted, all that stuff, so that on the start line, you know you're prepared for everything. I think that's that's really important. So what what does your self talk look like then? Like right like right immediately before the start of the game, like uh, race. Like do you visualize like succeeding at the race? Do you visualize finishing first, or what, what does your self talk look? Yeah, like? for sure. I think I'm just trying to like pump myself up because I know you know it's going to hurt the moment the gun goes. You've got to be on your A game, um, and you've got to really want it. And I think like wanting it is the biggest thing, and it can be hard to like. I suppose convince yourself that you really want to win. Um, some some races it comes absolutely naturally. You you just you're ready for it, and you those are the races where you do your best at. But sometimes it's it's hard. You might know you've coming off the back of an injury or illness, and you're not quite the form you had. That's when you really have to to um, trick your mind into into believing that you can still do it. So I think the mental element is a huge thing. The body follows the mind, and um, yeah, I guess on the start line, it is about being, you know, really focused too, because when that gun goes, there's 100 plus riders um, trying to be first into the into the first single track, and you have like this huge wave of riders just going flat, flat out. Um, so that's really, you've got to be onto it, you know, listening for that gun as soon as it goes, bang, and the race is underway. And I think really once the gun goes, you're, you're really involved in the race, and um, you really just push to your limits. Oh, I believe that one thing that's fascinating about, about cross country biking that I've seen, at least from the outside is you have to be so focused, right? Because it's such a technical sport and you have to watch out like on the ground, like how you're driving and everything. How do you manage to like keep that focus? Like those. Yeah, absolutely. Some race? riders are better at it than others. And you'll see the ones who are really good at it. They'll hit their lines every single time. Um, they won't make mistakes. They don't really get many flat tires or mechanicals and they don't crash often. Um, and the other guys, they kind of can get a bit flustered or lost in the moment, or, um, you know, if the, if the race is going well, they'll get a bit overexcited. You really have to be calm in the race, but also have that, you know, that energy and that fighting spirit still. And I think it's really important to be able to combine the two, but, um, yeah, also remain, like, in a composed state. Oh, I love that. So you t you've talked before about going into the deep, dark place what, what, in racing. What, what <laughs> deep, dark place is just, it's just about extracting every ounce of energy from your body, I suppose. And, um, you know, there's always, your body can always give you a little bit more, I think. You never quite fully, fully reach the, the end, the limit. Um, and so it's just a matter of, you know, whether it's, yeah. you have to judge it to perfection as well. You know, you're going, oh, I can't burn all my matches. Um, on the first lap, you might have to, you know, be wary that, okay, first lap, I'm, I'm suffering, but I can't actually go with the leaders today. I'm going to have to hold back. And sometimes those leaders end up coming back to you if you if you play the long game and and um, wait it out a bit and then bring bring it home hard. At some point in the race, you're going to have to hurt, whether it's early in the race, at the end of the race, or the whole race. It just, um, But still, you know, you've got to arrive at the finish line completely naked, and then you know you've done a good job. Yeah, it really sounds like it's about being strategic and and how you kind of push through the pain, right? And like not starting too fast, but at the same time starting fast enough that he's still in contention for like a medal or for winning or whatever it is, right? So like really yeah. making sure to pace yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, suffer in the end. everyone's suffering on the first laps, and everyone's definitely suffering at the end. Um, sometimes the middle race can be about just making it, like the middle part of the race can be about making it through the last couple of laps and. I think psychologically, if you can, you know, over a seven or eight lap race, if you've made it through six laps and you're still there, I think just that energy that you get from from knowing that, that you're still at the front of the race, you're still on the hunt, will bring you home the last couple of laps. So um, for me, I, I certainly notice that if I'm there and if I'm involved at the head of the race with a lap or two to go, I'm often um, very hard to, to stop or very hard to drop. So... Um, I know that's a big tool of mine, and I think I I need to exploit that often. You know, if I can make it there at the end, then um, it's a big bonus for me. Yeah, so, so kind of breaking it down into smaller pieces is, is if I'm getting you right, and like making sure, like, hey, once yeah, I for sure, it's done, a great way of putting it. And well. you know, we have laps, and each lap that goes by, that's another, you know, 
you're halfway there or you're you know three quarters of the way there it's just kind of ticking it off bit by bit and trying to um forget about the pain and just you know imagine that the finish line's getting closer and closer because it because it is um but just getting there as soon as soon as possible and hanging with those front guys because like i said you know if you are there with a lap or two to go i think that energy knowing that you're in the hunt will, will bring you home all right so making sure first you're in contention for like like a good race right like that's that's so inspiring sometimes right like when we know like hey i can actually make something out of it is so much better on so much easier mentally than if i know like hey the race is basically over because i'm in the back anyway so really making sure like you stay up front in the race stay in a position where you can yeah absolutely and that was kind and of if i look back to never missed so that last race where it was a, a super close you know race for the the win there um I actually, I mean, I wasn't at the front of the race right from the start, but I was near it and in contention. So after a, a couple of laps, I hadn't like spent all my energy. I knew I'd ridden within my limits and like halfway through the race, I was like, yeah, I'm still within sight of the leaders. And it's a lot easier to be, for your mind, to be passing riders. So if you're going forwards, then starting the first few laps at the very front of the race and, and only going backwards. Um, so yeah, I just feel like if you if you're riding around tenth in the new building, you're passing riders. You're like suddenly, oh man, I'm fifth. I'm third. Suddenly, oh now I'm I'm second, third on the podium. I think that's a lot more mentally rewarding or energizing, especially as the race wears on to be going forwards rather than backwards. And um, that certainly played a factor in that last race, and and uh, I think got the best out of me. Oh, for sure. And I, I mean, I, I watched a video of, of your last race where you took second behind the current Olympic champion. And it really, like, you could see, your, like, yourself, like, just coming from behind and, like, getting so close to the win there. So so what was going so well in that race? Well, I think there was, I mean, the body was there, and that's really important to have good form. Um, but also, I suppose mentally, I was quite relaxed heading into it. I knew what I was capable of, but there wasn't a huge amount of pressure on either and um the weekend before i had a good one so i knew like the only way was up really i was going to do better than the weekend before but how good was was yet to be seen and yeah i guess once i was in the race and once i was like in the top 10 and then in the top five it was just like well i'm i'm here i'm capable of the win so i'm really going to go for it Wow, I love that. <laughs> so, so, Anton, you had this kind of constant progression um, throughout, like, the junior ranks and then later until 2016 when you, when you had that sickness. So what happened there? Like, how long did it take you to kind of get back on track after you missed out on the Olympics? Kind of, I suppose, was compounded by the fact that in London I was... I missed out because I was, like, a few months too young. And um, the Federation wanted to take me to New Zealand, but they weren't allowed to. So that was kind of disappointing. And then to miss out in Rio due to illness was, well, not be able to even contest the um, the selection process. That was really disappointing. But I suppose in the scheme of things, you know, there's there's more years to race Olympics. There's certainly um, more years of racing elite World Cups and World Championships. And I kind of had to turn my attention to that. And in a way, it was about saving my career as well and my job because um, it's what I'd done coming out of high school it's what I really wanted to, oh, to for be. Sure. I mean, uh, I mean the, thing, the thing is, you like you still have such a long career in front of you, right? I mean, you're 23 now, so you still have, what, two or three Olympics still in front of you? Yeah, poten- you know, I said definitely um, two and potentially three um, at, a, at the top level. And, you know, I don't want to go to Olympics and, and finish, you know, 10th, 15th. I want to go there and get a medal. So I want to be there in good form. And, and the next ones, I believe I, I can be um, contending for those spots, which is something really positive. And, you know, looking back at the 2016 year and the time I had off, in the end it was probably four months off the bike and it gave me a lot of time to reflect and um, I needed surgery to to fix some health issues and was able to come out of it, I suppose, really motivated, really refreshed by that whole break and um, and I hit like rock bottom. So the only way to go forward was... Well, well, the only way um, was up from there. So that was kind of nice to be 
having a blank canvas, you could say, and just going, all right, I'm starting. It was almost like starting my and career. And one of the over. most fascinating things or, or tragic things at the same time I, I read about you on your blog was the 2017 World Championships where actually your saddle broke like during the middle of the race. What was going through your mind like in that moment? Yeah, that was pretty disappointing. You know, I kind of had some good results early in the year and then a bit of a, I suppose, mid-season like slump. And then, you know, World Champs was like that, that next race where I felt I was really on good form and um, I was having a great race riding around like a group from kind of fifth through to eighth. So I had that potential to be you know, a really top result. And um, on the last lap or you just come into the last lap, I crashed down this rock out. And it was something I'd ridden, you know, hundreds of times throughout different World Cup years in practice. But just this one time I got it a bit wrong and, broke my saddle so that was pretty disappointing i had to come into the the tech zone and and get it changed and um yeah it was just like i don't know a frustrating thing and i ended up finishing the race in 16th but it was you know about 10 spots lower than i really hoped and at the biggest race of the year that was um, pretty disappointing but you know at the same time it picked myself up off the ground and got the job done in the end so um i can still be happy with that Oh, for sure. Yeah. At least you continued and like still stay strong mentally. And that's why you're able to finish still well, even though that happened. So, so that was great. So what do your future plan looks look like? Like what's on your bucket list for this year and the next few years? Um, you know, this year I want to, my big target is the world champs at the end of the year. I want to, want to do well there, hopefully get a medal. Um, it's a big, big target, but it's probably, I believe it's attainable. Uh, this year, and then you know, there's also f we got oh hmm, four more World Cups uh, to go, and um, I want to you know hopefully take a win at one of those, or at least be on the podium in a few of them, and um, that would be a very satisfying year. Next year's uh, you know another another big year like always leading up to Olympics 2020 with the Olympics. Um, obviously, want to get a medal there as well, and. I suppose short term, um, those are the goals. And then, yeah, a bit longer term would be to just have a good, successful career and win some elite world titles and, and Olympic uh, Olympic gold medals. Wow, that sounds amazing. Definitely a good goal. <laughs> yeah. I'm really curious, what does the life of a professional mountain biker look like? I know you're, you're traveling through Europe right now, racing, but what does your daily life look like? Well, at the World Cups, it's... Um, you know, we don't see too much. You know, we're in beautiful places, but, you know, we're outside riding our bikes pretty much at the track and easy spin on the on the road for an hour or something as a recovery day or we're, you know, relaxed or cooking, eating food um, to recover at our hotel. So it's very much, um, you know, a hotel room or apartment to uh, the racetrack. That's kind of that the lifestyle is within like a, a 5, 10K radius. Um, so you don't see too much there. No. Well, so no shopping trips. No, exactly. No, no big trips to town or anything. It's pretty much just, um, especially not the World Cups anyway, you're really focused there and uh, you want to do the best job. Outside of that, you know, I'd be based at home or um, based somewhere in Europe, just doing some good training kilometers, getting those Ks in uh, and basically just trying to sharpen up for the, the big races. Oh, for sure. What's your favorite place to train at? Home. You know, you can't be home. Oh, yeah. For me, the best spots like is Christchurch in New Zealand. It's where I live. It's it's why I live there because well, I grew up close to that area. I know the trails very well. There's great roads. There's great um, you know, services with all my sponsors and, and bike shops and all that stuff in that that area that I use. So. Obviously, having all your friends nearby as well, that's really important. And um, Coming home at the end of the season, being able to train well over the New Zealand summer, which is the European winter, is quite nice for me. And um, to be able to catch Oh, that's that. true. You got the perfect combination. Exactly. Yeah. I get a lot of summer. So to be able to catch up with um, friends and family at home as well is, is really nice. Oh, that's awesome. So for any aspiring mountain bikers or athletes, do you have any... You know, tips or advice on how to get the best out of themselves i suppose you know keeping it fun is, is very important because if you're having fun like you're relaxed and that um you will race well in that sense you don't want to be feeling like 
the whole thing's a chore <laughs> and you're always drained yeah. from doing this oh do i have to race do i have to do that do i have to you know push my body to the limit you want to you want to do it and it has to come naturally to you and that starts with having fun um and i suppose learning from your mistakes and errors as a pro cyclist is hugely important we make a lot of them throughout our careers but you know the i think it's experience counts for everything and that's why you see a lot of the the older guys that are more consistent throughout their races they learn what goes well for them and what doesn't and they've had that time and the years to figure that out whereas us younger guys yeah we can do it and we might you know turn up at a world cup race and, and be top three but the next week you can be like around 20th and you go i don't know why um it's about figuring out why and, and eliminating those mistakes so that each week you can be in, on the podium. And, um, yeah, I think that comes with age and experience as well. Love that. So, so do you have like a, a regular like reflection process? Anything that like after every race you go back, you think like what went right, what went wrong? Do you have anything? I don't have like a sit down process or anything like that, but um, I certainly make sure to learn from what goes wrong and, and actually yeah. also importantly what goes right. You know, you need to eliminate the bad and, and you know, um, accentuate the good so that it just does come together in the next ones. I think that that's a really important part of being a pro athlete and um, just getting the job done. Oh, for sure. So for this uh, year, better settle maybe. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Well, maybe there's no crashing. That would solve the problem, yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure, yeah. No crashing. <laughs> So, Anton, do you have a favorite failure throughout your career? Any failure that actually later propelled your career forward? Oh, I th honestly, like, it's hard to call it a, a failure because of um, I feel like it was a bit out of my control. And that, that it has to be 2016 and the health issues I faced there. It's more about, like I said earlier, it, was, it gave me a clean slate. And um, it was like a huge disappointment missing out on, on Rio. And that's something that every athlete dreams of going to is the olympics and, and performing well there so to miss out on that when it was kind of going so smoothly in 2015 was hugely disappointing and i think that will be the single most um important factor that's helped drive me to become a better a better athlete and um to get to where i am the lot this you know this year especially it's all kind of yeah and i suppose the last result at the world cup was it all coming to a head and that was the reward for all the hard work and and um, the sacrifice that's gone into getting back to where I, I want to be. Yeah, it is. It's so interesting that you say that like you actually got better through that process. So what were some of the things that you did and then maybe you can suggest to other people if they're going through a hard time right now, they're having those setbacks, they may be injured, whatever. What are some things that people can do to actually propel their lives or the career forward afterwards? Well, I personally, I knew that I knew where I should be. I knew what I was capable of. And that's really important to know in your own mind. Even if other people don't quite believe it, it's that, that you know. And, um, you know, like, I'd had big results before. I've been a junior world champion twice and won comp games and big, big titles around the world. And for me, I knew something was wrong. Um, and that, you know, the people close to me knew something was wrong as well. And that was, you know, came... And then we got that surgery... Um, or sorry, the the diagnosis um, and then the surgery and that fixed my health problems. And from there it was like, all right, now I want to go out and I desperately want to prove to everyone who, who might have ever doubted that this was an issue, that it really was. And, and it's not something that I could really control. I was doing my best possible, but now I'm going to really make everyone... Uh, watch out for me and, and I want to come back stronger and better than ever. And that's, that's pretty much my, been my goal, my target and that hunger and desire is still there. And long yeah, that's life. exactly what you did, right? Like you're stronger than ever now. Then do you have a favorite mantra or quote that you live yourself with your life by? Honestly, I don't. <laughs> and um, I know some people do, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have any quotes. I see certainly ones that I, that I like and that uh, um, appeal to me, you know, time to time, but there's nothing that really sticks. And I think for me personally, quotes and, and these mantras don't give me a huge amount of um, motivation. I think 
they're like a, a sticky plaster in a way for some people to go like, oh, times are tough. Here's a quote that'll that'll fix that and, and give me some temporary motivation. I think it has to come from deeper within these things. And um, it's my personal opinion that you have to always have that drive and that hunger and, and have a reason that you do it um, rather than someone else's quote or belief. That's a personal opinion, of course, but it's just what works for me. Oh, for sure. I love that. So, so where does your internal drive come from? Like what pushes you throughout like the middle of a race when you're feeling that pain? What pushes you to, to succeed and to drive even faster? <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I, I've used throughout my career is, you know, you have to remind yourself that the others are hurting as well. <laughs> and yeah. you don't get it. You know, I think the reward at the end of a race, uh, the most satisfying ones are the ones you've had to work the hardest for. And um, they're the tightest races or the ones that just come down to the wire. They're the most enthralling ones and the most um, uplifting, rewarding experiences you'll ever have. If you handed the race on a silver platter, it doesn't quite have that same meaning to you. So I think, um, yeah, in the moment when you're racing, you just, you're just gritting your teeth and knuckling down and, and going, I want to show the world what i got because this is the biggest stage in the world and everyone's watching. And um, I want to prove to, well, myself, but also that, you know, the, the, the fans, uh, my sponsors and, and whatnot that I am capable of, of these big results. Love this. So, so when do you think was the time that you were able to do it the best? Like what was the m proudest moment of your career so far? I think it has to be the last World Cup round. Um, it was the first World Cup where I've really been at the, the head of the race. I had a third the year before, but I was never at the front of the race. You know, I think in the end I finished 30-odd seconds down on the winner. So, you know, close, but I was never quite quite there. I was, um, whereas in, in Nova Mesta, I was, you know, from halfway through the race, I was at the front of the race there and battling it out for the win. And so um, I suppose as far as races goes and how many people were, were watching or Nova Mesto for us is the biggest race of the World Cup of the year. It has the most um, viewership. It's probably the best, one of the best tracks there is. Um, the spectators are amazing and it's the one everyone really wants to win. So to perform well there and to come so close to the win, um, that was massively rewarding for sure. Wow, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> So what is one of the best or most worthwhile investments that you've ever made in your life? Could be anything in form of time, energy, money. Oof. Um, yeah, it's a tough one, really. I suppose um, one of my first spikes <laughs> uh, wasn't, wasn't right. something that I personally bought, but um, I was, it was my grandmother at the time. She bought me my first carbon uh, race bike and um, that was probably reward for some hard work and work ethic that I'd shown as a young athlete. And I got that bike when I was maybe 12 or 13 and it really motivated me to, to achieve more. And I think, um, that really stoked the fire within and, um, got me producing bigger and better results. And I was able to basically not look back from there. So as far as a single investment into my mouth work career was made, that would have to be it. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I actually read the story of, of uh, when there was an earthquake. I think it was 2011 and you actually lost your mountain bike like right before nationals. What, what happened? Oh, yeah. Well, New Zealand's pretty prone to earthquakes, but we had one in Christchurch that really um, kind of devastated the city and a lot of buildings were closed. A lot of people lost their lives. And this, this particular one, um, yeah, my bike was stuck in the shop and you know police court and everything so we couldn't get it out it was a few days before a national champs and they they did talk about cancelling national champs altogether because it was such a you know devastating event for the the country but um they went ahead with it in the end which was, sure. which was good and uh but i had to you know use a borrowed pair of wheels and the you know kind of a bit more of a crappy aluminium frame rather than my top race bike so um it was just learning to, I suppose, deal with adversity a bit. And um, I probably a hell of a lot better for that too, especially having that happen at an early stage of my career, you know. Um, coming from Christchurch, we've had a lot of 
natural disasters. A lot of earthquakes. We had, you know, last year there was a big, big forest fire. We had to evacuate my house um, a few days before another national championships, and um, so. So I ended up getting my bikes and just leaving the house. And, uh, yeah, so there's always something going on in Christchurch. It's floods or it's fires or it's earthquakes. It's just kind of a way of life. So we <laughs> definitely get used to the adversity and, and learning to deal with it. Wow. <laughs> Santa, before I ask my final question, where can listeners connect? With I'm you? on um, the best place to follow me and what I'm up to. Well, depends what you're into. Social media, Instagram, I have. Um also, Facebook, I have an athlete page there, and Twitter, I am on all three of those. Um, and I have a website, which is just antoncooper.co.nz, and that kind of has a more in-depth analysis I'll put up after each World Cup, normally within a, a two or three days. I'll kind of run through my thoughts from the World Cups, and uh, there'll be a couple of photos to share on there. Um, anything on social media is normally a bit more brief. Awesome. So then final question, what does mental mastery mean to you? You have to master your mind to, um, to get the most out of your body. And for me personally, as a, a pro cyclist and athlete, that's, that's hugely important. I think I mentioned earlier that your body often follows your mind and we have so many races together who are of a very similar, if not equal ability. And so for us to, to make the podium, you really have to master your mind and, um, get it to take over from take over the body from that aspect. I think that's uh, probably what it means to me. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you to everyone who tuned in to today's episode of Mental Mastery. Tune in daily for new episodes on how you can achieve mental mastery and live a happy and successful life. And if you would like a little extra push, head over to my website, maxweigand.com for a free ebook on mastering self-discipline and willpower. There, you can also sign up for my one-on-one habit coaching program where I help you master your habits and achieve your goals. Also, if you like this interview, feel free to rate and review the show. Until next time.